On the stick, you've got the F4, iconic fighter from the Vietnam era. That's actually painted in a Marine Corps paint scheme. This blue dog right here, this is a Blue Angel. This is an A4 Blue Angel. This is painted in the paint scheme of Lieutenant Commander Mike Gershon. Mike Gershon was the last Blue Angel to perish in a training accident in the A4. The Navy has since gone to the F-18, so this is painted as a tribute aircraft to him. And then here you have the F-86D model. This F-86D model is not armed. It's got that radar cone black nose. Flies a good bit different than the regular F-86. This is a Korean War era jet aircraft. So here we have the, the Huey, the UH-1, an iconic piece from the Vietnam era. The Vietnam War is often thought of as the helicopter war. And uh, this is an iconic piece and it's also a teaser to our Vietnam War display, which you're gonna see a little bit more of when you go inside, where we feature two more Army helicopters from the Vietnam era, the AH-1, and the OH-6. These have since been phased out by the Army, uh, by the Black Hawk. Here we are another in another secret hangar. <laughs> okay, my eye is drawn to... The little mini Mac here. Yeah, what's the story with this yeah, guy? So this uh, was built by a guy out in Hugetown, Alabama. It's uh, one of only three that were built. So, it's a cool little one-place experimental. And what, what makes a plane experimental? And so, can, can it get beyond experimental, or is it always... Yeah, you know, I, th I think it always stays experimental. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure on all of the regulations that are going on uh, beyond that, but, but everything in here belongs to that category. These are all home built by guys at home in their garages and workshops and barns and driveways. And sometimes after thousands of hours, you know, these are the finished products. So every, everything in here is home built. And, oh, and, wow. And it fits into that, into that genre. I hate to bring it up, but you know, John Denver died in an experimental plane. Yeah, he was actually flying one that's really similar to that one. Uh, that, that's the, the very easy uh, Burt Rutan design. Uh -huh. I believe the one that uh, Denver was flying was a long easy, sort of a, an elongated version of that. Did he build himself? I believe so. And here's a little fun fact for you. John Denver's glasses are in the McWayne Center here in Birmingham. I did not know that. Eh. Learn some every day. <laughs> <laughs> Brian said I can get in this helicopter. Wow. I want you to note that it specifically <laughs> says right here on the sign. Yeah. But oh, it says, uh, unless you're Ken. Yeah, but since I Very know, small print. Since I know people, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you... Uh, oh, thank you. Break that rule. Now, uh, it looks like I could very easily step on a switch. That's all right. Just don't push the red button. No, okay. <laughs> I'll push the red button. Oh, my gosh. Is this for grown-ups? Yeah, sort of. Ooh. There you go. Oh, yeah. Kind of throw that. Yeah. And this is experimental as well? Yes, sir. I don't think I can... I, I can't bend that way. So this is how it would be fun. Can I move this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is how it would be. You can shoot up here and see as he's moving the stick. Go ahead and move it side to side too. I kind of watch the, the pitch of the blades change. There you go. Wow. Hit, hit, the, hit the roller pedals there with your, uh, with your Chuck Taylors. All right, kick them back and forth. Now if you shoot back there at the tail, see the little, little tail wing pivoting. Mm -hmm. There you go. That is cool. Man, and two people can get in here. Not two Ken-sized people for sure. I'm Wayne Novi, Director of Operations and Curator at the Southern Museum of Flight. Museum's been on this location since uh, the early 80s. Uh, took a few years to build. So what is it like when, when kids come in and, the, and they see all this stuff for the first time? Well, you know, when a child comes in for the first time and, and in our world today, they're not able to just walk up to an airplane at an airport like it was years ago. Here we've let down a lot of the barriers and they're able to come up to an aircraft and, and actually touch it. And, and sh we get to show them that, you know, this is a wooden fabric airplane. This one's made out of metal. This one's made out of composites. So just that as an education point is eye-opening eye for them. To see something on a computer screen is it's it's completely different from being able to walk up to an airplane, sit in it, operate the controls, realize that it's not a video game, right. that this is real, and this airplane flies. Yeah. What's the mo what's the big draw here? What 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 is the museum most proud of? What exhibit? Uh, if I had to pick one airplane, we have a. a 
1925 Huff DeLand. And that's the first aircraft designed to be a crop duster. And it was operated by a, a little crop dusting company called Delta Air Corporation. Mm -hmm. And they operated out of a few cities in the south. Well, their president and CEO, C.E. Woolman, uh, saw that this business could grow into something a little bit more and started something called Delta Airlines from this little crop dusting business. Well, we have the only original huff to land there is left in the world. Wow. And uh, what are your feelings towards the, uh, the, the new technology, the newfangled drones that you see everywhere? I, th I think we've been going in a positive direction. Uh, everyone is afraid that they can be used for some nefarious purpose. Yeah. But I think people are just going, they're going to do that, whatever that vehicle is. It's going to happen if that's what their intention is. I think as far as it being a tool, I think it's an excellent tool for us to use. Absolutely. In the There's so many positive things that drones can do. Yes. And you guys are trying to relocate, is that right? Yes, we're in that process right now. And I was just in the boss's office looking at plans for the new building. And I see so many large aircraft out in your parking lot and, and around this place. And all that's going? All of it's going. How? What? That, that is a gargantuan task. You know, it seems unbelievable to say that the easy part will be moving the airplanes, mm. but, but it is. The hard part is the... Can we get the land graded? Can we, can we raise enough money to build the kind of facility that we can get all of the important aircraft in, inside? They're not just pieces of art, and even though they could be displayed as one, but what we've, we've exhibited a lot of our aircraft in a diorama format, and since we're an educational facility, it's a great way to show kids, put them in in the diorama and, and explain to them that this is, this is your history, mm -hmm. these airplanes did these things, and, and, and it was people just like you that were involved in this and, and did these actions, these extraordinary things. If people want to know more about the museum and possibly visit, uh, what is your website? Uh, the website for the Southern Museum of Flight is southernmuseumofflight.org. Are you a pilot yourself? I'm not. I'm working on it, though. Okay. I'm, I fly regularly, so. Okay, good. But I'm, well, thank I'm you for talking to get with there. me. Well, sure, absolutely. Thank you, Wayne. Anytime, Ken.